Welcome to episode 16 of Sailing Doodles. In this episode, we leave Little Farmer's Key and head on down to Cave Key, and then we visit David Copperfield's island of Musha Key before heading on down into Georgetown. The winds weren't exactly in our favor on the way down to Cave Key, so we ended up motoring all the way. But it wasn't too bad, it was only about a 10 mile trip. I've said it before, but one of the great things about sailing in the Exumas is you can always stay on the leeward side of the island. You can see this boat is rocking and rolling as it makes its way through the cut. Well, we finally got a good night's sleep last night. The wind has been blowing for 20 to 25 knots or more for 10 days. Sleeping has been kind of a nightmare. We spent two nights at a marina, and that, even then, uh, it was they were coming in and and uh, we had to put bumpers out and of course you know you got to change the move the bumpers every time the tide moves and all that and uh, sleep was not well had the last 10 days but today wind is remarkably less and finally a calm anchorage as you can see um, but it's a nice little sunset or sunrise Boys are always seem pretty determined to mess with Megan's yoga up there, but I don't think she minds too much. With the wind died down and the seas calm, we decided to uh, take the dinghy out and do a little exploring around the islands. It was really neat some of the seeing some of the cool rock formations there. And the skylights in those little grottos are amazing. This grotto was big enough that we could take our dinghy right in there, and so we did. Right outside of Musha Key, which is a private island owned by David Copperfield, is a piano that he had commissioned and sunk to the bottom of the seafloor. It's in about 15 feet of water, so Megan didn't feel like diving all the way down to the bottom, but it was still pretty cool to be able to get there and pretend to play David Copperfield's piano. One of the hassles of walking the dogs is that, uh, you know, if there's a dinghy dock or something like that, we can take them right over to them and it's easy to keep them clean. But if not, we just go right up to the beach and they run up and down the beach. But then when they get back on the boat, there's so much sand and stuff in their paws that we have to rinse their feet every time. Otherwise, the boat gets, gets, turns into a sandbox. Rinse a paw. <laughs> They're kind of used to the drill by now. <laughs> and where's your other back one? There it is. And so he's done, and now I lift him up. Come on. Ready? Ready? And up. Hey, man. Your paws nice and clean? Turn. We are pulling up anchor here from Cave Key. I'm uh, gonna head down to meet some friends there who we had dinner with last time, uh, or a couple of weeks ago, uh, over at Rat Key. But uh, we kind of got a hand system now we've been using for pulling up the anchor, so we'll see how well that works. You can see here. You ready for you? So that obviously means the anchor is to the left. So I'm turning the boat to the left and going forward a little while she brings it in. Yeah, that means slow down. So I knew that already. Uh, I already put it in neutral. That means stop. She hasn't quite figured out that I can't turn when I'm stopped, but you know, we're working on that. Megan was really starting to get the hang of this sailing thing and was definitely more of a help when it came to getting the sails up and getting underway. Although I did still have to help her some.
Here, Megan's rolling out the head sail, and we were underway. I haven't told her yet, but there's a boat gonna come right past us and she's sitting there topless, so. Uh, you know, fun times all around. Oh, it's still in there. What are you talking about? Oh my God, this is gonna be, no, get it. Here, I'll take get the camera. Get what? Get it, I'll take the camera. You, no, wait, don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. It's in that cup that's turned over. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh, size I think that, I killed it. The size of that moth. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, moth. I didn't see you in there. I killed it, didn't I? Probably didn't do it any good. <sighs> oh, oh! <laughs> I didn't kill it! He's gonna dry off, though. Okay, dry off somewhere else, though. <laughs> <laughs> so you were washing a moth? <laughs> it scared me! I wasn't expecting a freaking huge moth in there. Look at the size of that thing! <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. This is the Atlantic Ocean. It's been a washing machine for weeks now because there's been so much wind. Today there's no wind at all. I mean, just with the boats making we head into it. And, uh, it's like a swimming pool. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you can, I mean, we're in 40 feet of water right now. I don't know if you can see it. I mean, you can easily see the bottom, no problem. And, you know, Everything. just, so just out that way, I mean, it's, you know, go a quarter mile or a mile that way and we're in, Three or four thousand feet of water, and it's just dead flat calm out here. Pretty awesome. Yay! We got a fish. I'm running so hard. I just... I saw it jump a second ago. Yeah. I don't know why it's on the top like that. I, I looked back and it had already gone out a couple hundred feet on the line, so I don't know how long it had been caught. <sighs> You're almost there! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my gosh, it's Something in half. ate it in half! <laughs> what? <the> <laughs> Oh, it's so sad. I mean, it just <laughs> jumped a minute ago and something, oh my God. Whoa. And something ate it. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Are you kidding me? Dangling the bait. It really was too bad about the mahi, but there'll always be another one. Meanwhile, we took the boys to shore and let them get some exercise. They kind of invented a new game of chasing paddleboarders. We met with our friends off the sailboat, Crystal Blue Persuasion, and they're definitely dog people, so they had a good time playing with the pups. Chat and Chill is a pretty popular little beach bar and it's a congregation spot for all the cruisers in the Georgetown area. You can see from this poll that there's a pretty diverse and far ranging group that sail to the Exumas. That evening we took the dinghy in to meet with our friends Martin and Cindy of Just One Dance and have a little fun. This is a party that the locals were having because they won their Junkanoo competition. It was really neat, open bar and free food. The locals are super nice and even let Megan try on one of their costumes. 
She said it was really heavy and she can't imagine how those people dance all night wearing that thing during the Junkanoo Parade. The next day, Megan found her second favorite thing to sitting on the bow seat. It's hanging out in the water on a floaty. Well, there's an old saying, uh, red sky by morning, sailor take warning. That would be the case today. Beautiful red sky this morning on sunrise, but the wind is really supposed to pick up today. It's supposed to be 50, I mean, some forecasts even say 60 knots of wind. So we've got everything tied down pretty tight. You can see here the blow came through as predicted, although not quite as strong a winds, but it was still a interesting uh, day sitting in the boat watching the wind meter. I want to thank Scott aka Sluggo for sending us a hard drive with a bunch of movies and music on it. it really makes passing the time on the boat when we can't get off of it easy. It was kind of a bummer that the day before Megan was due to leave we had such bad weather, but the day she was leaving was pretty good weather. How you feeling? Weird. Yeah. No, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> Excited? Sad? What? Just weird. I don't know what to feel. I am full of emotions and it, it changes every 30 seconds. So, excited? Sad? Yes, both. Okay. Goose. Are you sad Megan's gonna leave? It was a pretty sad day, but Megan's sister is having a baby, so she needed to get home and spend some time with her. Boys, you've made my trip so special. The bay was still a little rough, and we didn't want to get all our luggage wet, so we called a water taxi to help bring us into shore. Well, I just dropped Megan off at the airport and got back to the boat here. I gotta say, it's uh, pretty sad to see her go. Uh, she's been here from the start, two and a half months. And, uh, you know, it's uh, when you spend that much time with somebody for that long, I mean, 24 hours a day, pretty much. Um, it was sad to see her go. Uh, she's gonna go home for at least a month or so. Uh, we're gonna talk about it, see if she's coming back or not. Um, but uh, you know what? I want to thank her for being a part of this. Even if she, I mean, I hope, hopefully, you know, we'll see. But uh, thank you, Megan. You have been amazing and uh, really made this trip enjoyable so far. And I already miss you. I know, I know, Goose does. Goose, you miss her. So I am here at our best, most wonderful friends bar, Sandbar Cantina, Dallas, Texas, uh, the most wonderful sand volleyball place. And um, a lot of our friends are here to uh, console me <laughs> um, and hear stories and everything. Um, and so here we go. I'll show you. From Dallas, Texas, Rough Seas, I miss you very much, and they love you very much, so cheers to everything. Drink up, drink up, drink up. Miss you guys. Well, thank you for watching another episode of Sailing Doodles. You can go to sailingdoodles.com and become a patron for as little as a dollar an episode. 
And be sure to check out our live feeds every Sunday when we can. Sometimes we're just sailing and can't do it.